Hi, this is Pastor Rick at Living Hope Baptist Church here in Hammett. I want to invite you, if you don't have a church, um, to come and visit us on Sundays at 1020 a.m. here on 433 South San Jacinto Street in Hammett. Um, and uh, we'll have a wonderful time worshiping our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to read a passage of scripture from the book of Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him, that's Jesus, out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. That's quite a sight, isn't it? Jesus Christ is uh, speaking to his disciples and there's a little crowd there around him. And he's, he's getting ready to return back to heaven from where he came in the first place. Uh, he goes up, a cloud receives him, and he's out of sight. Have you ever lost a loved one uh, and grieved over the loss of a loved one? The hardest part is the separation that they're not here with us. It's very hard. Um, I take it very seriously when someone loses a loved one. In this case, Jesus had spent a great deal of time, especially with his inner circle of the disciples, uh, apostles, um, and uh, they were going to miss him greatly when he ascended back into heaven because now they're going to have to make it without him being immediately present with them. But I want to tell you a secret. Jesus is still here with us. He said, Lo, I'm with you always, that he would never leave us, he would never forsake us. I want you to know Jesus is as close to you and to me as a prayer. You can talk to him, he'll hear you, and the fastest thing in the universe is not the speed of light. The fastest thing in the universe is God's answers to your prayer. I was talking to a group last night and I said, do you realize that God already knows what you're going to pray before you pray? And he already sends an answer to us while we're praying. And sometimes I've had answers show up while I was praying. I'm not the only one. If you're a person who prays frequently, you probably had that experience yourself where it seemed like God already knew what you were going to do or what you are going to pray before you prayed it or before you did it and he already met you. Guess what? We all should have that experience when you have faith and trust in him. And so they're standing there, these guys on this place, and they're looking up in the heaven, and uh, the, these angels come up and say, uh, why are you looking up to heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come. He's coming back again. Jesus is coming back again for you and for me. Have you put your faith and trust? in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? If you have, then you can know what I know and has given me peace in the midst of all the troubles around us in this world to know that I belong to him. He's coming back. He's going to take me with him into heaven, a real place that he prepared for all of us who put our faith and trust in him. Anyway, what they do after they heard this, that Jesus is going to come back? They didn't just stay there. It says, They then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. You know what's amazing about this? When they were told Jesus is coming back, they headed to the upper room and they got busy praying together. What were they praying for? Well, they were praying for the Lord to send the power of the Holy Spirit upon them, which he later did. They were praying together about the replacement for Judas Iscariot, who had betrayed Jesus, 
and one of their assignments was to replace that 12th man among the followers of Jesus, the disciples, and they were praying about that, and when they all came to unity, it says in one accord, I want to explain, that's not a Honda. The one accord is when we're in unity with one another in Christ. And it says, in prayer and supplication. You know, part of our prayer is we praise God for who He is and what He's done. And part of our prayer is we actually pray for others. And last, you pray for yourself. Do you pray that way? I hope you do. I hope you're looking forward to the return of Jesus Christ. He's coming back. And while we're here, we got a job to do. We need to pray. We need to tell people about Jesus. We need to gather together every week and worship. And when we do that, we're doing what pleases God. And when you please God, He's going to bless you in ways you probably don't even know. So let me know when God answers a prayer that you're praying while you're praying, or almost immediately after you were praying, He already had an answer on the way to you. That should tell you something about you can trust Him more than you thought. God bless you. Have a great day.